All right, guys, got an email here. Thinking about being a police officer and I'm going back to school for social work in the fall. I currently have received my license to be a security guard. I am looking for jobs and trying to see where I can get a job of security and how I feel doing the job before joining the police academy. But one thing I am scared of becoming a police officer is holding a gun because I always feel like there's other ways of solving problems and what if I had done something wrong or got hurt? How do you get over the fear of holding a gun or do you get scared still to this day? What other position do they have for social work in law enforcement as a police officer? All right, real quick, my name is Josh Barker. I served some time in the military, 13 years in the military, and currently a deputy sheriff, been a cop for about four years now. I think this is a really good email and I appreciate the person sending it to me. I know it's probably not easy to, you know, be vulnerable and ask questions like this. And I think it's a good opportunity to kind of shed some light. And uh, I, I decided to make a video of it and she's okay with it. So from what I could tell, she's young. Uh, she wants to be a police officer and she wants to go to school for social work. I think that's a great idea. I think more officers should have some background in mental health. Uh, a little bit about me, I was in mental health before I went special forces in the army. I was in a couple years in the mental health, as a mental health specialist, and it did, it helped me a lot throughout the rest of my life. How to talk to people, uh, how to handle people that really don't want you around, especially, especially as a law enforcement officer, that mental health training helped me out tremendously. So I, I truly believe we could always use more mental health training. Uh, you're going to see all kinds of mental illnesses. And if you're not trained to know how to talk to people or have the experience of, in talking to people, then you're not going to know what to do. And it can make matters significantly worse. So I recommend it. Um, but I also recommend you really, sh nobody should be a police officer or a law enforcement officer until you're, I mean, 25, right? I'd say the earliest anyone should be an officer is 25 years old. Uh, it gives you life experience. It gives you uh, time to understand stress. 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, you, you don't know what real stress is, most likely. Most of the people don't know what stress is. And you put yourself in a situation that's very stressful in this line of work, you not know if you're you're not knowing if you're gonna crumble under pressure or how to handle a situation than someone that has more maturity. So 25 years old is my opinion. Um, also, if you get called to a situation where it's a domestic situation and they see this young cop there, they're not gonna take you serious. You know, if there's a verbal argument or if there's an argument, you know, a verbal domestic an argument going on and you're trying to de-escalate the situation and a young guy or, or girl shows up trying to empathize with the people in the house, they're not gonna want you there, all right? So again, my opinion, 25 years or older, I think uh, if you wanna go into college for a little bit to get you know social work background, I think that's a great idea. Again, more people should do that. Uh, security guard, I think that's also another great idea. So that's probably a good stepping stone to go into law enforcement. So you getting a, a background and dealing with people, then you're gonna have that experience. You're gonna have experience in knowing how to handle a situation, how to de-escalate a situation from it getting any worse. All right, so security guard, good stepping stone. Another good one would be, you know, working in the jail. So, or any kind of correctional facility. Um, she, it sounds like she's scared of handling a gun. I think that's a very common fear. 
even if you go to the range and you've never shot a gun before, you go to the range, there's that pressure of how you're gonna handle that stress. Again, stress. And the more you do something, the more confident you get. The more that fear goes away. The more you shoot your gun, the more confident and less fearful you're gonna be of that. So I recommend shooting your pistol or rifle as much as possible. It gives you more experience. It gives you more confidence knowing that if a situation arose, you know you would know how to handle it. So a lot of that goes with, you know, working with them, working with them, work. It's like anything else, you know, public speaking. People have a natural fear of public speaking, but the more you do it, the better you feel, the less fearful you are of that. So again, I recommend going out to the range and shooting as much as possible, right? So in the beginning, more often than not, you know, so a couple times a week, and then you can taper it off if you need to. But another thing I want to hit on, um, you asked if that's something that I still get scared of to this day. I don't get scared of pulling my pistol. And I don't want to say I'm scared of using it. I really just don't want to use it. And 90% of law enforcement officers don't want to use their, their pistol. They don't want to have to unholster their pistol and aim it at someone. You know, there's this stigma that's going around, especially nowadays, that's getting worse, where people think that law enforcement officers just want just want to use violence right just put, they're too quick to pull their pistol but the, the reality is we don't want to pull it we don't want to draw our pistol we don't want to point it at another citizen that's the last thing we want to do and that's the last thing i want to do i do not want to pull my pistol on someone but it's for the safety of everyone around and it's going to our standard operating procedure if someone does a certain thing you know i.e has a weapon in their hand is non-compliant um then you have to do what it, what you're supposed to do and so that's where you know experience comes in where you can hopefully de-escalate situation if you had an experienced officer and he did have to pull their pistol he or she had to pull their pistol the experienced officer would you know be able to talk the suspect down where they don't have to use that pistol um and i'm not saying every situation you can de-escalate there's sometimes where you, no matter what you say or do they're not gonna be talked down you might have to use lethal lethal ways. And so, again, nobody wants that to happen. Your body is under an extreme amount of stress and you don't want to fire onto a citizen. Especially nowadays, cops nowadays will wait longer, put themselves, put themselves, their lives in jeopardy because we don't have the same support that we used to. So they will put themselves in, in danger longer because they don't want to shoot someone because they're afraid of the backlash of it, which we should be held to a higher standard. Again, that's, that's you know, that goes without saying, we should be held to a higher standard as law enforcement officers, but um, not putting our lives in danger at the same time, right? So uh, let's see. Do I get scared? I mean, like I said, I don't get scared. I just, I don't want to use it. And that goes, that comes with experience. I had the military experience, you know, special forces where we handled guns very often and were deployed and we used guns very often. So, and she asked, is there another position they have for social work in law enforcement? I'm sure some agencies, your much larger agencies have positions for social workers but in your smaller you know your smaller cities and and counties and stuff like that you're not going to have that but it's not to say that you can't be that voice in your department where you know you're you're pushing social working and mental health and stuff like that 
where other people can come to you and ask for your opinion and your advice on mental health and how to handle a situation. So some people come to me because they know my background in mental health. And I think it's a great idea that that's something you pursue before going into law enforcement. Again, great email. I appreciate it. And if anyone has anything to say about that, add to it, you can you know hit up in the comments. If you have any questions or anything you want to send in the email and you want me to share it, go ahead and do so. All right. Peace.